Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to join you all for our spirit chat, which is a chance for you to participate in a live coaching session and get your questions answered. So I'm going to take a moment and just chill and wait for some people to start arriving. Hi, Ebony Sheree, thanks for joining. If you haven't been here before, this is a chance to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered about practicing magic, fire magic, candle magic, divination, developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual gifts, developing your spiritual practice, working with your ancestors, spirit guides, guardian spirits, guardian angels, meditation and all kinds of things related and in between, including developing your psychic abilities and your intuition and strengthening those gifts and learning to actually control them and use them in your life. I'm good, Ebony Cherie, how are you? Redwood Ranger, thanks for joining. Joanna, thanks for joining. So I might have a couple of special announcements. Um, one of the things that I have coming up, Irene from Urban Folk, she and I have decided to make a digital version of our course. We recently um, have been teaching a class about the magic of herbal aphrodisiacs. And oh good, yeah, you're welcome. I'm so glad that you enjoyed your reading today. I, would, I knew that was you, but I wasn't gonna say anything about it because I didn't know if you wanted that to be public. But yeah, I enjoyed our reading too. Thank you for mentioning that. So our course is about the magic of herbal aphrodisiacs. We're going to be making a digital version of this course that's going to be available to all of you. It's a really fun class where I teach a portion on candle magic and spell casting. It has some basic instructions for learning to cast spells and it has some basic information about candle magic where I teach people how to load a taper candle for the purpose of drawing fiery passion into themselves and into their lives. The overall umbrella premise of the class is about layering in magic and in folk magic. So Irene teaches a portion about making an, an herbal elixir, an herbal syrup for and an aphrodisiac syrup for medicinal purposes. And then we teach all about how to pair the candle magic with the medicin medicinal herbs using the same herb. So that layering energy throughout your life. It's a really fun class that we really enjoy teaching. So I'm happy to that we're going to offer it digitally. Of course, we're only in the very beginning of that. We haven't um, taken any steps. We've just decided today that we're going to do that. So we'll have to sit down and create a concrete plan and then I'll definitely let you all know about launching details and things of that nature. So that's one piece of news that I'm excited about. And then on Tuesday, we've got the full moon in Virgo. I am going to be doing a group service dedicated to St. Blas or Blase or St. Blaze. <laughs> There's a, a lot of different ways you can say that. And it's going to be <clears throat> it's going to be a service that is really centered around that kind of purifying, organizing energy associated with the saint as well as associated with the throat chakra as well as associated with the full moon in Virgo. It's all of these energies coming together is very much conducive for purifying, clarifying, assisting you with communicating your truth, assisting you with communicating your authenticity in the world, assisting you with really speaking your truth and really expressing yourself, as well as assisting you with clearing out or getting clear, getting clear on your vision, getting clear on yourself, as well as clearing out any energies that need to be cleared out in order to accomplish and achieve these things. There's always a one overall theme for my group services. 
uh, and one saint that they're dedicated to, but people are always allowed to petition for anything that is near and dear to them, anything that is going on in their life at the time or any goals that they have, any personal um, goals, any personal things that people are, challenges they're working on, things they're working through or things they're working towards. So those are my two special announcements for today. Otherwise, I see a lot of people joining. I see a lot of people waving. Hello, keep marching one. Hello. Hello, everyone. Just sing. So if you haven't Ventura Destiny, I haven't seen you in a minute. Thanks for being here. I'm doing good, lady. How are you? If you haven't participated in one of our spirit chats thus far, it's a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get any of your questions answered about developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual practice, developing your spiritual abilities, your psychic abilities, your intuition, um, learning to meditate, working with your ancestors, your spirit guides, your guardian angels, working with saints, um, practicing magic and candle magic, folk magic, divination, and all kinds of things related and in between. Sometimes we talk about dream work, it's really up to you. This is driven by you. Oh, thank you, Ventura Destiny. You're sweet. This is really should be driven by you because I'm here for what you may need. So if you have questions, go ahead and submit them. I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Once in a while, I have a theme that I like to talk about when I do these chats or maybe something that I like to share with you. But overall, I really just like to make this time for you and about you and give you some space to get your questions answered. I hope you're all having a nice day. It seems like most of the country has started to warm up a bit. Um, I'm hearing that it's been a little bit warmer on the East Coast. Um, I'm not sure what it's doing in Michigan right now where I have a lot of friends and family. I think my father was saying it was going to be in the 30s these days. So that's better than it was before. Um, so I hope people are staying warm, getting through the long winter. I know it's been rough in a lot of areas. I hope everyone's been staying safe and staying off the ice. There's been a lot of ice storms. And I hope everyone's enjoying the weekend and getting some time to renew, refresh, take care of yourselves, rest, do what you need for rejuvenation or do what you need for fun. There's lots of ways that we rejuvenate ourselves, our souls. There's lots of ways that we get, um, we get inspiration and lots of ways that we get nurtured. Uh, sometimes self-care is about chilling the fuck out. Sometimes self-care is about going out and hanging out with other people and being inspired by other people and um, so yeah I hope that you get what you need how do you go about reading a candle while burning like flame dancing and then wax left like it looks like a heart thank you okay so there's a lot of different um, components to your question um, the way that I personally go about reading a candle while it's burning is kind of, um, it's a multifaceted process. One of the things that I often do is fire scrying, meaning staring at the candle flame, going into a meditative trance-like state, and then seeing what kinds of guidance, what kinds of messages that I receive from spirit while doing that, while that service is, is burning or while that spell is going. And the kinds of guidance or insight that you may receive during that time has to do with how to accomplish your goal or perhaps how the spell is going to turn out or what kinds of steps you can take in order to support the energy of that working, things of that nature, maybe further insight into the circumstances or situation that helps with more clarity to achieve the goal, etc. Now, reading the wax is a different thing. It's a, it's, a, um, it's a different kind of divination. And reading the wax is more about interpreting the um, literal symbols that are there. But there's a little bit more to it as well, depending on what kinds of traditions 
you are involved in or what is personal to you, there are very specific things that the wax can do that indicate specific things. I don't like to stick to these black and white interpretations about the wax flow or the wax remnants because I'm really tuning into the energy of the working and there's so much more that can that I can get by doing that and I have found that the the symbolism in the wax is very unique to each particular situation or circumstance I rely much more on spiritual connection and intuition rather than literal symbols that being said, the literal symbols can be helpful. You're saying a flame dancing. A flame dancing is very often uh, spiritual energy or spirit or the universe responding to your working in a favorable way. It's often indicative of the strong presence of spirit actually saying, I'm here, I hear your prayer, I see your working or your spell, and I'm supporting this, and this flame dancing is it is a representation of my energy that is here supporting you and answering you. Um, wax left, like a, a wax that looks like a heart is going to indicate love. Um, if you were doing something for healing in love, for instance, it would be favorable that the heart is being healed. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can go with that, but that one's pretty literal and um, pretty significant, it would be very clear that signs for love are favorable. And if you have follow-up questions about any of that, Joanna, please let me know. I do, you have a direct email where I can get in contact with you for this coming Friday. Yeah, I do have a direct email. Um, <laughs> my email is linked in my Instagram profile. Right under the highlights, there's a button that says email. You can click that and get me. Um, the email that I use for business is inquiries at missmelinda.com. And I mean, I think that you have my other, I think you have my email. So um, go ahead and get in touch with me. I'm available. I'm readily available. I'm answering emails at least once a day. Sometimes I take two or three days off and I don't answer emails, but that's pretty rare. Even when I take days off, I'm answering emails. Emails are always answered in a timely manner. If for some reason you send me an email and you don't receive a response within four days, then resend it because it could have gotten lost somewhere. That doesn't happen very often, but that's a good rule to go by. You're welcome, Joanna. I'm, I hope it's helpful for you. And yes, you're welcome, Ventura Destiny. Let me know. If you had a problem with the email or something, then send me a DM and let me know what that problem was. But otherwise, it should be easy to get in touch with me. Email button underneath the highlights or inquiries at missmelinda.com. I don't know if I've had, it looks like I've had a couple new people join and it looks like we've got some people here that haven't been here before. So if you have not participated before, the live spirit chat is a group coaching session. It's a chance for you to get your questions answered about developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual practice, developing your spiritual gifts, as in your intuition, your psychic abilities, your dream work, etc working with saints, working with ancestors, working with spirit guides, working with guardian angels, guardian spirits, divination, candle magic, folk magic, and all kinds of things related and in between. So if you have any questions, please do ask them. I am happy to answer to the best of my ability. I don't typically come with a bunch of topics to talk about. I did make a couple of special announcements at the beginning of the chat. If you miss those, then this live session will be shared for 24 hours when we're finished here. So you can go back and watch those if you would like to. But I don't come with a ton of stuff to talk about. Once in a while I have things on my mind or something that I want to share with you. Um, but mostly I want this time to be about you and what you need and really a chance to get your questions answered. So please don't be shy. Please ask your questions. Something that's been on my mind a lot lately is death. And I think that we have a lot of stigma in our culture about death and that it causes us a lot of problems. 
a lot of problems in this world, all of this big fight against aging, all of this um, stigma against old people, stigma against um, what is not young and beautiful and preserved, all of all of these things stem from our fear of death. And I think when we really think about the fact that we are mortal and we are so frail and that we don't have a lot of control over when we're going to die or how we're going to die, I don't think it's morbid at all. I think it's completely um, natural. I think that we should be more open about thinking about death, more open about talking about death. I think it will help us to really accept the fact that this is like the big, the big, the bigger than big spiritual lesson that we're here to learn is that everything is impermanent and that we are frail and that we cannot control things, right? So here we are mortal. We all know that we're going to die, that everyone that we know is going to die. And we are here to live and love and appreciate life while knowing that it is all temporary and that it is all going to go away, I think there's really significant lessons to be learned there when we contemplate that. I was a recently affected by a death of somebody that I knew but have never met, somebody who actually is a radio personality. I'm not going to get too far into it, but um, someone who had an impact on my life and things like that can really take you by surprise. Someone that you've never even met suddenly realizing how they impacted your life. And I've been doing a lot of contemplating about how we live our lives and how our legacy is lived on after we passed and things of that nature. So it, look like, it looks like I've got a couple of questions. Please send some positive light toward my way. No problem, Ventura Destiny, no problem. I'm sending you peace. I hope that you receive any guidance that you need, any insight that you need. I hope that you are spiritually guided on your path. I hope that your challenges are worked through easily and positively and that you are protected. Oh, come on. Do you have any advice for aiding a period of shedding and transformation? Yes, I do. One piece of advice would be when you are going through that kind of transformation, a lot of, not necessarily a lot, but it is likely that some old stagnant emotional energy from the past is going to arise within you. When that happens, it is important to discern is this energy here, Am I, is my awareness being drawn to this because it is something that is unhealed, that I need to heal, or is this simply old energy that needs to be released? Many times we have old stagnancies in our energy that need to be released, and it doesn't mean that we necessarily that we have additional work to do attached to that. And one of the keys to releasing that energy is to be grounded and to really visualize and use your body as a vessel of energy. Refrain from attaching psychological or emotional drama to the feeling. Feel the feeling, but refrain from analyzing it and attaching psychological and emotional things to it. So refrain from thinking about it too much. Feel it, see it flowing through you, and allow yourself to release it. And if you are at all um, practiced with um, energy work or visualizations, you can easily employ one of those techniques to really visualize that energy flowing through your body and out of your body. You can then do grounding techniques to release that energy into the earth and really assist with letting go of the old and freeing yourself to move into the future. I hope that helps. If you have any other follow-up questions, let me know. Death is sad because sometimes us humans don't want to say goodbye. Well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that it is sad. It's sad. Yeah. And the thing about sadness is that we can't go 
around it. We can't get around it. We can't avoid it. We have to go through it. When we try to get around it, find a shortcut or avoid it, then it builds up inside of us and it becomes some of these stagnant energies that I was just referring to. We have to actually feel and allow ourselves to be sad in order to get through things and in order to heal. And to do that, we have to accept our feelings as normal. We have to accept ourselves as normal. We have to say, this sucks but I'm really sad and I'm going to allow myself to be sad because it's how I am and it's what I need. Um, and just accepting that it's normal and accepting how we feel as well as being honest about how we feel. It sounds simple and it is, but it makes a huge difference. You feel a huge freedom, a huge weight lifted off of your shoulders as soon as you just accept the way you feel. That is the path towards healing. We're all here, it's normal, we're all here to experience pain and sadness and death. It's part of our spiritual evolution as humans. And yes, it's challenging and it's sad and it's difficult, but it is also normal. So it's, that's another part of it that is important to keep in mind. Don't let yourself get into a mindset where you're like, I'm experiencing difficulty and therefore something's wrong with me or I'm being punished or I'm not normal or my life is all fucked up. That's when you get really down, down a, a, um, a, where it becomes really difficult to come out of that rabbit hole. So reminding yourself, this is what humans go through. This is normal. Yeah, I know you meant to say death. Zachary Julia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm glad that uh, the things that we're talking about are resonating with you. If you haven't been here before, our spirit chat is a chance to participate in a live coaching session and have your questions answered about developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual abilities, developing your spiritual practice, um, your intuition, your psychic abilities, learning to use and direct and control those abilities, learning to develop those abilities, working with your spirit guides, your guardian angels, your guardian spirits, your ancestors, practicing magic and candle magic, divination, meditation, and all kinds of things related. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to submit them. I am happy to answer them to the best of my ability. You pronounced it right. I went through a low moment the other day. It's almost like the universe's way of restoring balance to your life. Yeah, yeah, it can be. And also just recognizing the fact that we, we're gonna have low moments, even if there's no discernible cause, we're not gonna be happy all the time. We're not gonna be blooming and flourishing all the time. That's not how the balance of life works. All we have to do is look at nature and look at the fact that we have the sun, the moon, we have death and life, you know, to understand that the ebb and flow is part of what we're supposed to go through. We're not gonna be same, same, steady, steady all the time. I do have I do have candle magic coming up for the full moon. Miss Melinda, I don't know why my heart is still being nice to a man who has caused me so much. I'm assuming that you're saying so much pain or so much difficulty. Well, that's a good question. I can't answer it for you. You have to answer it for yourself, but I can assist you in getting down to that truth, especially more in a one-on-one -on -one, um, situation or scenario. Some of the important questions to ask yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of the important questions to ask yourself. What is he reflecting back to you about who you are? The people in our lives, the experiences that we have, the world that we are in, it is a mirror to ourselves. This can be applied to any situation. What is it about him that reflects something about you. Can you look at him and can you analyze the what you are supposed to learn from this, what you're supposed to learn about yourself and about your self-development? De Very often some of the things within him that are causing you problems relate somehow to things within you 
that also need to be healed or worked on or transformed. That is not to say that this is your fault. Whatever you are going through is not your fault, okay? Um, I'm not into victim blaming. My spiritual practice is not about everything that you do attracts what you experience and therefore it's your fault. No, 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 that's not me. But we can learn from these things. And I think that, you know, there are reasons that we have patterns in our lives and that there are reasons that we are drawn, that different people are drawn to and attracted to each other and that there are lessons there somewhere. Now, if you're just caught in a pattern that you've just become exhausted and you know, you're tired of fighting and you're so exhausted that you're like, I don't even have the energy to get out of this situation, then that's a different scenario. Um, I would really need to know more about your situation on a one-on-one -on -one basis to know if and how I could help you, but you're not alone. These things happen to people. People get caught up in these patterns all of the time. Um, I've been through really difficult relationships. I've been through abusive relationships. I've been through um, difficult times. I, I understand. So if shoot me that email that you were talking about earlier and I'll see if there's anything we can do. Any candle magic for the full moon coming up? Yes, sir. I, on Tuesday, the 19th, I am performing a group spiritual service dedicated to St. Blas, St. Blase, St. Blaze, however you want to say it. And it's dedicated to the Virgo, new, Virgo full moon and the saints. It's very much centered around purifying, clarifying energy, as well as our throat chakras, communication, things of that nature, allowing us to get clear about our truth so that we may communicate and express that truth, express ourselves to the world. You can contact me if you have questions about that or questions about joining that. Oh yes, definitely. That's why I can't wait for this coming Friday. Right. If I'm not getting a lot of questions, I might pull some cards and talk about some of the um, tarot cards and some of the lesser known or lesser explored interpretations of the cards. One of the things that I've noticed a lot through offering readings these past few years is that um, there are still a lot of people out there that really go very strictly by book definitions. And there are so many different ways to interpret the cards and they're all right. And it's really about your intuition and your spiritual connection and your abilities that determines how you should interpret the card in a particular scenario, or a particular situation. I've been reading with people many times and they've asked me, I don't understand why you would interpret this card this way, but somehow you know what's going on with me. And my answer is always, it's not about the book definition. It's about the larger connection. And there are a million different ways to interpret cards. That's why I cross-reference all the time, um, reference different, different authors, different sources, um, and different types of tarot cards in order to really explore all of the facets of their interpretations, as well as their light side and their shadow side. So let me see if I can pull a card and talk a little bit about some of the more unusual interpretations. The Lover's Card. This is the Morgan Greer deck, which I like for visual references. Um, it's got really beautiful, colorful photos that work are colorful pictures that work really well in photos and for a visual reference on a video such as this. Um, a lot of people feel that the lover's card relates to lovers and love very specifically, very literally. There are a lot of different things going on with the lover's card. The One of the interesting definitions that I have seen is that the lover's card reminds us to appreciate what we have in front of us. Um, you could relate the lovers to Adam and Eve. I'm not 
Christian, by the way. Um, but yes, I do. Um, I do find value in the Bible. Um, the lovers can relate to Adam and Eve and how they are in paradise. They're in the Garden of Eden and they have everything that they need. And it reminds us to appreciate everything that we have and to watch out for temptation and to watch out for interferences that could drag us down and take us away from all of the wonderful things that we have. And that can apply to relationships, but it doesn't have to. The lover's card is not literally specifically only about relationships. The lover's card can also be about the two halves of ourselves needing integration. Sometimes it's about two people in our lives that we're having trouble um, being kind of in between or choosing between or understanding, but more so it's about the two halves of ourselves needing integration and balance. It's about balance and harmony between the masculine and the feminine. It can mean getting in touch with your masculine side, getting in touch with your feminine side. Um, Jung had a really interesting idea that was the foundation of a, lot of, his, of, of a lot of his work, and that was that there are two selves that we all have. One self relates to timelessness. Uh, applying that to spiritual beliefs, it could be one self relates to reincarnation and the world and lifetimes beyond time, beyond culture, throughout time and space, and then one self uh, relates to the here and now. He felt very much that he had those two selves within him, and he therefore found a way to make conscious decisions that instead of feeling like he had to choose A or B, black or white, left or right, he chose the middle ground, which is a whole philosophy in Buddhism as well, the middle ground, the path of least resistance. Um, the path that offers us integration and harmony and balance between our two selves. The lover's card can very much symbolize this kind of energy. For instance, I believe it was Jung wanted to, one part of him wanted to study art, be an artist, and one part of him wanted to be a doctor or a scientist, something of that nature, and he chose psychology instead. And at that time, psychology was still a very creative field in which you could have a lot of freedom and a lot of expression. So he was able to integrate some of that um, tendency towards creativity into it. And he very much made that decision consciously as a way to integrate the two halves of himself and take the middle road, satisfy both of them. So a lot of times the lover's card is about you don't have to deny one part of yourself over another. You don't have to only choose one part of yourself in order to be successful or in order to achieve fulfillment. You will be much more fulfilled if you find a balanced way to make your choices based on integrating yourself into a whole. And when you can find a way to make those middle ground choices, you're going to find yourself naturally becoming more whole, more balanced. So that is one way that the one of the interesting interpretations that I find of the lover's card, whereas it will come up in readings and I will talk to people about feeling as if they have to make difficult choices between two opposites and they'll say to me, I don't understand why you didn't interpret that for love, right? So I'm telling you why. So I see a lot of people have joined. I've just been kind of um, speaking about some things that interest me, some things that I find useful about Tarot specifically, but also some other topics. And this is really a live spirit chat, which is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get some questions answered about meditation, about developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual practice, working with ancestors, working with spirit guides, working with guardian angels or guardian spirits, practicing magic, practicing candle magic, um, folk magic, divination, developing your intuition, developing and strengthening your psychic abilities, and all kinds of things related. So if you have questions about anything like that, please let me know and I'm happy to answer your questions to the best of my ability.
here's the Fool card. I love the Fool card. I mean, I love all the cards, but um, so there was this interactive tarot play here in Austin. I'm gonna answer this question. How do you know if you've met your spirit guide? You know, <laughs> um, you know intuitively. I would need a little bit more information in order to uh, assist you further with that. Um, if you are in tune with your intuition and you trust yourself, then you will know when you have met your spirit guide. If a spirit has appeared to you and you're not sure who they are and you feel like something is off about them, then I would encourage you to work on that relationship and really um, pay attention and see if it's a spirit that you could or should trust or not before you determine who they are. If you have some experience with or you're comfortable with just simply asking questions and receiving guidance about it, go ahead and ask them if they're your spirit guide or who they are. If you're somebody that um, spirits are drawn to and you've had a lot of different experiences with different kinds of spirits coming to you, then you're gonna wanna be a little bit more careful and make sure that you protect yourself before you determine if this um, is a spirit that you can trust or not. There are also a lot of different kinds of spirit guides. There are what we call high level spirit guides, which are spirit guides which have never been incarnated. And there are spirit guides who have been incarnated. This could be a variety of things. It could be an ancestor. So there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this depending on your specific level of experience, um, the specific ways that you use to, that you use your intuition or that you use to communicate with or convene with the spirit world and the specific experience that you're having. May have a party to go to tonight. He asked me to come with him, but my spirit doesn't want me to go. Should I go or not? No, don't go. Your spirit doesn't want you to go. Don't go. Dockery, go ahead and let me know if you have any more information that you care to share about this um, spirit or this guide that has appeared to you, and maybe I can help you a little bit further. Can a dark entity come in when you open that door of the spiritual realm? If so, how can we protect ourselves? Yes, that is possible in rare cases and depending on your personality and your particular energy. Um, it's not, this is a, this is where I like to be careful. So I don't live under that kind of fear, but it is important to protect yourself. Let's say that. Um, so the way that you can protect yourself is by developing a strong relationship with your guardian spirits or your guardian angel and asking them for protection, developing a strong relationship with your ancestors and offering them for protection. There's lots of other ways that you can protect yourself as well by strengthening your aura, by protecting yourself with an energetic protective bubble, by asking God or the universe to protect you, by doing energy work or meditations for protection, by staying spiritually, um, by, by staying spiritually clean, in other words, doing spiritual cleansings, spiritual cleansings of your home. Um, when you do practice this kind of stuff, spiritual cleanliness is very important, and that does mean spiritually cleansing your body, your energy, and your home. That is the crux of your protection, really, keeping your energy clean. Um, the the but the other big foundation is the spirits and guides who are there to protect you and just know that even if you haven't made that specific contact and you haven't specifically asked them for protection everybody has guides around them who are there to protect them sometimes they won't interfere unless you ask them because they don't want to interfere with your free will so depending on what kind of guide it is, you may need to actually ask for that protection. Not very many people experience dark entities. That's not something, that's not a fear that I live under. One of the reasons I don't live under that fear is because an entity like that would feed off of your fear. So by having a lot of fear surrounding that, you would actually be um, more open to experiencing something like that. 
Um, some people who are really susceptible to the spirit world would be more likely to have these kinds of experiences depending on their circumstances. And then things get a little bit more complicated if you're dealing with something like that. You feel like it's your grandfather. I was going to ask you if it was an ancestor because I had a feeling it was an ancestor. So why don't you just ask him, how does your intuition work? How do your um, spiritual gifts work for you? Are you more likely to hear guidance inside your head, inside your mind? Are you more likely to hear guidance from outside of yourself? Are you more likely to feel it in your body, to have physical sensations when something is right or is not right? Are you more likely to have a vision? Are you, you know, so it's all about how this works for you and use however things work for you to ask, is this my grandfather? You're welcome. He passed when I was very young, but I feel like his presence has always been there and I have always wanted him there. If he's still around, if he passed when you were young and he's still around in your lifetime, there may be a specific reason that he's sticking around because, you know, the ultimate goal is that we move on and go through the things that we need to go through for our own spiritual evolution. So your grandfather has stuff to do in other realms or whatever. I don't claim to know about other realms. I'm only a human. I can't know everything. So, But the point is he has other things to go through in other order to develop his spiritual evolution. He has other things to learn and other things to do. It could be that one of the things that he needs to do is to assist or guide you in some way. That's pretty rare that uh, someone that we've known in our lifetime then turns around and becomes one of our guides right away. So it's more likely that there's something that he needs. There may be something he needs from you or other family members so that he can then go ahead and make his own progress, transition completely out of this world and continue on his path. So if you're going to start this relationship and you're gonna start um, speaking with him, you know, first make sure it's him. And then you're going to want to start asking what you can do for him, what he needs for his spiritual progress, his spiritual evolution. Um, a lot of times we can give simple offerings of light, candlelight, and water, and prayers, and honor in order to assist with a spiritual evolution. But from a more shamanistic perspective, there can actually be something really um, literal, something really um, specific that he needs to work out with the people who are living that you can assist him with so that he can go ahead and transition. So these are all things to consider. Okay, so you are um, clairaudient mostly and <clears throat> I don't know if you've worked with your clear audience a lot. It sounds like at least a little bit or you wouldn't realize that hearing is the way that you receive your guidance. So go ahead and ask him and then sit and listen for for that information. A lot of clear audience people have a lot of trouble trusting themselves and trusting their gifts. They can easily get into a cycle of um, overanalyzing and questioning themselves and saying, how do I know it's not just my thoughts? How do I know I'm not just making this up in my head? One of the big ways that you know is that it will actually feel like it's coming from a different part of your head or your mind, or it will sound slightly different. But you can definitely um, work with that through being very aware of what these uh, voices sound like or what these thoughts sound like within you and eventually you will be able to distinguish very quickly um, the difference. You saw him during meditation. Yeah, I mean, you're getting signs left and right, so I think you already know, right? If you feel like you need to double check, then go ahead and double check, but only allow yourself like one more time of double checking because there's a... There's like, he's going to start getting impatient with you. Like, I've been telling you, I showed up during your meditation. What the hell? So um, go ahead and double check with him one more time and make a bond with yourself. Like, I'm going to trust myself and I'm going to trust my signs. So I'm going to ask him one more time and I'm going to trust what happens after that. Because you need to start this process of figuring out what he needs. He needs something from you. 
Can we manifest our soulmate twin flame? I don't have the same perspective that a lot of popular, um, uh, that is in alignment with a lot of popular beliefs about soulmates and twin flames. I don't, I, I don't carry that popular perspective. Um, I think there's a lot of soulmates that we can have. I don't think that there's just one that's meant for us and like if you know that we have to find that one person and if we don't find that one person then we don't have our soulmates I don't think that way so um, my advice or my thoughts on that may be different than what you expect or different than how you believe which is fine but the thing is a twin flame or a soulmate can also be somebody that is here to teach us very important lessons about ourselves. Um, somebody who has, who we have a kind of um, spiritual pact with from other lives. And we are here to learn from each other hard lessons about ourselves through this person and through our experience with this person. There can be a lot of those kinds of people that appear in our lifetime. Can you manifest them? Sure, you can manifest anything. Do you need to manifest them? No, they're gonna be there anyway. If this is a, this is a, a soulmate or a twin flame is someone that you already have a spiritual bond with, that you have a pact with, that you have an agreement with, that you're gonna learn this stuff from each other. They're gonna be in your life no matter what. You, It's not possible to get off track. Um, we are all on a spiritual track and it's not possible for us to get off of it. So you can't like veer off of your path and then everything gets screwed up and you don't meet your twin flame or your soulmate and then you're screwed. Um, no, if you have that agreement, it's gonna happen. You don't have to manifest them. Okay, thank you. Most likely being there for his children, my dad, aunt, and uncle. Right, but so then that would, I mean, from my perspective, then that would, that is often about those people haven't mourned or grieved properly, or they have something going on in their lives where he's feeling like he's worried about them. Like they need something from him. He needs to, if he's there for other people, it's because he feels like he can't go until they're okay. So I reiterate that there's something that needs to be worked out so that he can eventually go. You're welcome, I'm glad it's helpful. I agree about the lessons and your view as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm glad we're on the same page and that resonates with you. I do a lot of readings where people ask me about twin flames and soulmates. That's why I felt it necessary to give a little bit of um, backstory before I delved into speaking about that. There's a lot of um, misinformation out there about it now and there's also a lot of people that maybe don't even like do a lot of research. They just see a couple of taglines and they're like, oh my god, I have to find my twin flame or they think that everyone they meet is their twin flame. Not to down on people but there's just a lot of different ways to look at this and uh, um, sometimes the way that I look at it is not the same as other people. I'm not doing readings here. Everything in its own time, yes. Astral plane, yes. Read me, please. Okay. I'm not sure what you are, um, I'm not doing readings here. I'm just talking with people and answering questions. So if you have a question about your spiritual path or development, Go ahead and submit that and I'm happy to answer it to the best of my ability. As far as your other comments about the astral plane and, and whatnot, I'm not really sure um, what you're speaking about, but you can go ahead and elaborate if you'd like to. What's a good day to cleanse your house? I like Mondays or Wednesdays. Sundays are good too. Um, those are all nice days of the week that correspond to removing energies and cleansings. Um, I like Wednesdays really for cleansings. I like Mondays if the cleansing is needs to be more intensive and is really involved in like removing blockages or removing unwanted energies or kind of like removing, wow, a giant crane bird just flew by my window, sorry. <laughs> or um, like removing, uh, like you've been sick or you've been through a time that was really stressful or someone died or something and you want to like, really make a conscious effort to move on from that 
energy cleanse your space and move forward than I would do a Monday if it's more about just like rejuvenating and um, things of that nature than I would do a Wednesday Sunday as well same thing uh, Sunday especially if um, you're really looking at spiritual purification purification and spiritual cleansing for the purpose of like your spiritual development or staying spiritually <laughs> spiritually clean for your personal spiritual practice or you've been doing a lot of work like um, you've been doing a lot of readings or you've been doing a lot of um, mediumship or you've been working a lot with like ancestors or spirit guides basically if there's been a lot of spiritual activity and spiritual energy around you then I would use more a Sunday for that Great, I'm glad that you read and channel. If there's anything that you'd like to share with us or any questions that you'd like to ask, go ahead and do that. I don't recommend sage. I think that sage is, so the question is, what do we use for the cleansing sage? Um, I think that sage is overused. I think sage is uh, used improperly. Um, white sage is being over harvested. Um, Sage was originally used by indigenous Americans as an offering to the spirit world and as a way to open up your connection with the spirit world and with your ancestors and your guides. Um, sage does clean the air and does energetically clean, but that is not only what it is intended for. I feel that people have limited knowledge about sage. I feel that there is more... Um, valuable wisdom that needs to be associated with using some of these sacred and traditional plants and herbs. You don't have to burn anything if you don't want to, but if you want to burn something for a cleansing, I would recommend frankincense. I would recommend clove. I would recommend rosemary. Um, I don't specifically recommend sage. Palo Santo, no. Unfortunately, Joanna, I have just learned some very um, disheartening news about Palo Santo and I won't be using it anymore. It's being over harvested. It's being harvested in ways that are detrimental to the environment, in ways that are detrimental to indigenous peoples. Um, those trees take about 50 years to fully mature and in the countries where they originate in South America, you are supposed to only harvest them at very specific times in very specific ways, but because of the huge Western demand for Palo Santo, They're, the trees are just being decimated and the people are distraught. In, in some cultures, the only way you're supposed to receive Palo Santo is when a shaman gifts it to you. I love Palo Santo, but I won't be using it anymore. I have a, a small amount remaining. I'll use that up, but I won't be buying it anymore. I encourage everyone to stop um, buying Palo Santo because it's uh, the demand of Western consumers that that is kind of driving this destruction. Uh, obviously, we're not in control of the destruction, but you get the correlation. Um, it's better to use things that grow around you or things that you can easily get from your environment around you that have very purifying energies. So there's a lot of things that relate to purifying energy. I mentioned rosemary is a great one. You can make ro dried rosemary. There's the same as dried sage. Um, frankincense is great. A lot of things that are related to like the sun and the element fire are very purifying. So in that context, you could also use cinnamon. Cinnamon has been used traditionally in a lot of magic for spiritually purifying. You can also use dried orange peels. There's a lot of things that you can do instead of sage or palo santo. If you're gonna do cleansing work, if you're gonna cleaning work on your boyfriend and see to be till showing negative energy, what sh steps should be done? Okay, so cleansing work has, be done, has been done on a boyfriend and he's still showing signs of negative energy, what steps can be done? The most important thing to keep in mind is that any magic or spiritual work can needs to support the steps that are taken in our everyday lives as well. We're not going to be able to completely change someone through magic or spiritual work. We're not going to change who they are. We are going to affect 
their energy and how they react to things and possibly even um, spiritually encourage or support them with making realizations. But the steps that they take are their own because we're, we're not, I don't know what you're doing, but I wouldn't interfere with free will. So it's like we can't force him to take the steps he needs to work to be to do to be spiritually cleansed. So I always uh, recommend a holistic approach, which means you know we need to tackle things on an emotional, a physical, a, a medical, and and a spiritual level. We need to address things on every level. So there could be another level that needs to be addressed with him, right? I I would need to know more about his specific situation in order to determine that. You could bump it up. You could try bumping up that uh, cleansing work, intensifying it, and see if you can really um, enhance and intensify that energy. Sometimes we need to keep repeating this work for a while until we see results. There are times that people work on things for over a year before they get the end goal or result that they are seeking. Sometimes that's normal, right? So you could try intens intensifying this or continue to repeat it until you see results because I don't know how long you've been working on this. Um, you could get him to take a series of cleansing baths if he's open to it. He, I don't know if he is. It sounds like maybe he's not. But the cleansing bath that I would recommend would be fresh lime squeezed into bath water with some kosher sea salt. And I would recommend that for a series of nine days or until, yeah, a series of nine days is what I would recommend for this. You're welcome for the information. Thank you so much. I will no longer use that either. So what can we do? Incense. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other things that we can burn, you know, it doesn't have to be just Palo Santo or Sage. Um, yeah, I'm really sad to learn about those Palo Santo trees. And you know, they only take the heartwood. So the little branches and the bark and everything in some cases is just going to waste because the heartwood is all we use for, for burning. You're welcome, Mary. Maryland Blue, I think is your name. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions about that or if you have other um, details maybe that you want to provide me that would help me to further assist you. I'd be happy to. Hi, thanks for joining. This is a live spirit chat. It's a chance to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered about your spiritual development, your psychic abilities, developing your psychic abilities, developing your spiritual path, practicing magic, practicing folk magic, candle magic, divination, meditation, working with spirit guides, ancestors, guardian spirits, and all kinds of things in between. Yeah, it's such a beautiful wood. Um, you know, the funny thing is it could grow here. I live in Texas. You could grow it here. Um, if other people in other areas of the world in climates that were ideal for it started growing it, um, that would probably be helpful. But you'd have to make sure that, you know, it's okay in, in this environment. It gets kind of into a touchy situation when you bring plants into an environment where they're not indigenous to. You don't want to throw off the ecosystem. But... Anyhow, there's a lot of things to consider. Thank you, everyone. There's one minute and 36 seconds remaining. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining today. I really enjoy our chats and our conversations together. I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of your questions and I appreciate you joining. And it's really a pleasure to see you. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. You stay warm and you take great care of yourself and you get what you need. How can I remember my dreams? I hardly remember them. You can remember them by starting a dream journal. And if you don't want to write stuff down at four in the morning or whatever, when you wake up, you can do a voice recording into your phone. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great weekend. Lots of love. Stay blessed.